This here is another MacBook. It appears to have an issue with the logic board. Let's open this MacBook up and see what the issue with the logic board is. So I'm going to unplug the battery from the motherboard, and now we're going to see how many amps this takes when I plug it into a charger. It seems to be taking 10 to 15 milliamps. It spiked up to 150 milliamps, and now it's stuck at 150 milliamps. Now, if you've been watching the stream for any period of time, you'd know that 150 milliamps on a MacBook Air, particularly an 820-3437, A2000165 board, that's typically going to be either a short to ground on PP Bus G3 hot, or all says power good missing due to some sort of corrosion. So le that means we're most likely in an SO state. So if I were to measure something like the pp 5 vso rail over here, most likely that would actually be present. So we're most likely making it to an SO state. And if you don't know what I mean when I say things like SO state, S3 state, S5 state, when it comes to power rails, I would highly suggest that you check out my guide, which is linked below. It's going to give you all sorts of information on what power states mean and everything. It's a freely available document on Google Sheets or Google Drive and you're welcome to check it out. So we are indeed in an SO state. So I'm going to guess that either one SO power rail is missing or all sys power good is actually missing due to some sort of corrosion by it, which is keeping our CPU from turning on because CPU vCore is not going to come on if all sys power good is not present. Do you make your employee sign non-compete agreements for several years? No, I don't make any employee sign a non-compete agreement. Making employees sign a non-compete agreement is an admission that you are a garbage boss. And what I mean by that is if you are a, if you're a decent business owner, I don't mean if you're good at business. I mean if you're a decent as in like good human being, not decent as in good at making a bunch of money. If you're a decent business owner, then the people who work for you should kind of not be looking to run away as soon as humanly possible to another competing place. I have had employees leave because they wanted to do something else with their life. They wanted to go into medicine. They wanted to go into managed IT services or whatever. Or they wanted to go into hospital work. I've had people leave for things like that, but I, have re I don't I think I've had more than one person ever leave to go to another repair shop, and that person actually really wanted to come back for a long period of time. I think if you treat people decently, that, that's your non-compete. But if you need to use the... If you need to use the force or uh, the power of the government to keep people from leaving, you're probably a really bad employer. And you probably treat people like shit, and you should probably look into that before getting people to sign crap that says they can't leave and that they're tethered to you. I don't believe in non-compete agreements. I think that they are trash. I've also hired people that sign non-compete agreements, and it was easy to get around them. I had to hire this one dude as the janitor. So, <laughs> so on payroll, he was listed as janitor. That was funny. But, yeah, if, if you're a shit boss, then I think that the, the, the free market of other places that are willing to take you is there for a reason. It, it keeps me from being a piece of shit. If I decide that I'm going to start paying Paul S $5 an hour, then somebody should be able to take Paul S and, you know, give him a better job. You know, the other businesses are there to kind of keep me from becoming a piece of shit. And non-competes are a shitty way around that. I don't like non-compete agreements at all. I don't think that they should be valid. So as can be seen here, this is the area that seems to have corrosion. The way this works is if you have PP5VSO, PP3V3SO, PP1V5SO, uh, PP and then P1V8S3, P5VS4, PP1V05SO, and DDR reg, you're going to get all cis power good. Now, all sys power good is going to be required in order for the CPU to turn on. In many of the old computers, all sys power good is actually going to be the enable uh, for the CPU buck converter chip. Now, all sys power good missing means we're going to be missing CPU vCore. And if we look over here, we have two resistors that appear to be corroded, and those are the resistors uh, R8153 and R8156. So... Let's take a look at R8153 and R8156 and see what they're for. So R8156 is going to be where PP3V3S5 enters the all-sys power good transistor. And R8153 is going to be where the 5-volt rail, if it's turning on, enters this transistor to tell it, hey, 5 volts is good, turn on. So I'm just going to remove a lot of that area because, again, this is one of those things where the, the bench power supply becomes really helpful. 
Because when you have the bench power supply, when you and I, I'm, I'll link to a video in the description below when I post this to the main YouTube channel. I use a, uh, a bench power supply because it tells me how many amps it's using. If I just plug in a MagSafe connector, that doesn't tell me much. But when I have the bench power supply and it says, hey, on this model it's taking 150 milliamps. What I do is I think to myself, the last time it was taking 150 milliamps, what was the problem? And then I immediately look in that section of the board. And every time it's taking 150 milliamps, that's, every, that's the amount of power draw I expect when every rail is turning on besides CPU vCore. And the reason for every rail to be turning on besides CPU vCore is typically because all this power good is missing, typically because of corrosion by that chip. So it's really important to have some sort of way of telling how many amps the system is using, whether you're working on iPhone motherboards, MacBook motherboards, or any other sort of PC motherboard, because it'll give you a lot of information that you wouldn't have otherwise. So let's uh, go over here, and we're just going to add some flux and remove some stuff from there. So I'm going to add some flux. First thing we're going to do is remove stuff here that's corroded, and I'm also going to remove that transistor for all this power good. Even though it's not corroded, it's right next to the stuff that is corroded, and it don't cost me much to remove it. And I'd still be a successful boss if I have no backbone, says Jorge Ramirez. I don't think you can be a successful human being if you have no backbone. I think you need to establish a backbone before everything else. This is coming from somebody that once upon a time had no backbone. You definitely need a, to grow a backbone. Don't let people walk all over you. Okay. What is he doing? I'm not familiar with this. Singa, I am fixing a motherboard. As you can see, the fan is spinning. And since the fan is spinning, the board is most likely working. Look at that fan spin. Look at that all sys power good strong signal. Mm-hmm. That's a fixed MacBook. And if you want your MacBook to be fixed just like this one, check out sendyourmacbook.com. Not only do we have mail-in service, We've even added a feature whereby if you don't want to deal with going and getting a box and making a label and dealing with all that crap, we will send you a box with a label inside of it that you would use to send the MacBook to us. All you need to do is give it to a postal worker or bring it to a postal service pickup. Send your MacBook.com. Don't delay. Send your MacBook today. Or even better, buy a computer that's not a MacBook so that you will never need my services.